my goodness, week 12 of the NFL season delivered. It delivered in some ways, I'll tell you that much. In others, not so much. Not so much. Why don't we get started? Thanksgiving. How did your Thanksgiving feast go? I'll tell you, uh, we got a, we got a couple of teams here that aren't going to be happy, you know, with their um, Thanksgiving gift. Lions are still winless, like they had they had it right there. They just couldn't stop the Bears in that last drive. Unfortunately, that allowed the Bears to get the field goal in the end with Andy Dalton. I know, right? Andy Dalton. I know, crazy stuff. Now the Lions are 0 10 and 1. Remember, they got a tie, so, yeah. They're one of two teams that are basically out of playoff contention at this point. I mean, they're out of playoff contention. They're not going to win a game. That's obvious, so. It is what it is. Um, I have no explanation to this Raiders-Cowboys game. Oh, dear Lord, there were 28 penalties. Or, excuse me, penalties. 28 penalties. Why? This was a sloppy game for the most part, too. Just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so lost. 28 penalties, half of these penalties probably didn't make any sense. This game had to go to overtime because, you know, it is what it is, and the Raiders were still able to win this game in the end. You know, I, I'm just... I'm just perplexed. I'm perplexed at this stuff. You know, at least Tony Pollard was probably the best part of this game. You know, taking a kick back for a touchdown. I mean, the, the dude was the best part of this game, no doubt. Because uh, I mean, I mean, again, gaudy stats usually don't mean anything to me anymore. You know, like uh, like I've been saying about quarterbacks at the college level too. So gaudy stats from Derek Carr and Dak Prescott just don't mean anything to me anymore. You know. It's it's definitely about the other guys on the field, and both these teams. It, it, it was a rough game. The Bills also beat up on the Saints. I mean, when Dawson Knox was just they, they I mean, this dude was just all over the Saints defense all night. Couldn't they? They couldn't stop him. Saints couldn't stop him. I mean, Saints got more injuries. Alba Camara, so I believe he's still injured. I mean, there, there's just injuries and things going wrong with the Saints. I mean, things have just gone wrong. Things have just gone wrong. Like, they had to put... No, wait. That will stop back up. Like, you know, things have just completely gone wrong for the Saints. It's, it's going to be the same thing that happens to another team, but we'll talk about that team last when we get down to that game. Because, um, yeah. Did not expect... Did not expect a blowout like this, you know, from the Saints. But they got blown out pretty bad. Bengals! Oh, they blew out the Steelers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Big Ben. Big Ben and company. Y'all. Y'all just got Joe Mixon. Because, <laughs> I mean, dude was running all over him. Two TDs. 165 yards on 26 carries. Bengals defense was playing elite out here. Playing elite defense out here. This is the Bengals defense that we love to see right here. This is the Bengals defense we love to see. Playing damn good defense. Now the Steelers are sitting here like... Uh, uh, they're, they're sitting here in a precarious situation now. A, a precarious situation they don't want to be in. You know, they're, they're falling behind other teams. They're falling behind other teams in the playoff hunt. And another team that's gaining in the playoff hunt is those Miami Dolphins. I don't know where they come from the past couple weeks. They dismantled the Panthers. We're talking Cam Newton looked horrible out there. He got benched. Like, second game back, you get benched? My goodness. I mean, he was, what, 5 of 21? Yeah, 5 of 21. Just, just not there. Two picks, just not there. Christian McCaffrey, he's done for the season. Again, just, just, this, this isn't, this isn't what the Panthers wanted. You know, all that after a strong start like that. There were three and seven, two and seven. They're past nine games. Two and seven. You can't make this up. 
You cannot make this up. The Giants. The Giants, they were able to use their defense. They picked off Jalen Hurts four times. I only caught the end of this game. 13-7 to there. You know, Loretta was three Jalen Hurts interceptions. I know there was another fumble in there. I think there was a fumble. Yeah, there was a fumble in there by Hurts somewhere. You know, Giants play just good enough to win this game. Just good enough. It wasn't perfect. You know, they got they they got they got some things going. The Giants do. They really did what they needed to do, which was win this game. That keeps that keeps Dallas in the lead for a little bit longer. But you know, again, Dallas has been struggling the past few weeks. You know, and we'll talk about another team. Again, we'll talk we'll talk about two teams. You know, this Monday night game in a moment. Um, yeah, the Giants really turned it around. They've won a couple of huge games that they needed to win to stay in this thing in the NFC East. They really, they really needed that. Defense has been on point the last couple weeks. Remember that Raiders game? Yeah, they've been on point. And then J.C. Jackson said, "Yeah, <laughs> let me be the let me be the star player for this Patriots defense." Like I know I am. And that's exactly what the Patriots did. I mean, you got Matthew Judon harassing Ryan Tannehill all day long. I don't think... Yeah, he didn't. He didn't even have 100 yards, Tannehill did. This was just rough. Rough game. Mac Jones is out here looking like a Big Mac. Like a Big Mac daddy. Playing damn good football out here. Where where did this Patriots team come from? They, they pretty much taken first place in the AFC by this point you know like this is the kind of stuff we were fearful of like the Patriots are back they're back in this thing just like like they never left I mean this this was a dismantling I get it I get that the Titans are injured I get it but my goodness you gotta put up a little bit more fight than this put up a lot more fight cause I mean this is rough. This is really, really bad, man. You can't expect this. Falcons beat the Jags. You think that was pretty expected. A close game, though, for the Falcons. Close game. You know, the only one by seven. Well, how about those Tampa Bay Buccaneers? They somehow got it out again. They got it out their system again. Because, I mean, the Colts had a great first half. They had a great first half. Carson Wentz and company had a great first half. But you know what happened? Carson Wentz in the second half. Yeah. <laughs> Interception. A fumble. You know? Stuff that you don't want to see from Carson Wentz. Stuff that you don't want to see. Leonard Fournette was the guy in this game. If you had Leonard Fournette in fantasy... Boy, you better be your y'all, you, you, y'all in fantasy probably just killing it with money right now. Four for four out there, touchdowns. My goodness, man! Like, like this is this is unbelievable. The way the Bucks came back, won this game, beat the Colts. Now they they they're looking like the Bucks that you know. That, that could say something. That looking like the Bucks that could say something again. Because, I mean, you know, there have been times this year where I'm sitting here like, hmm, I'm just kind of befuddled at the Bucks sometimes. But this was a huge, huge way to get back into this. And for the Colts, this was just inexcusable. You had the lead. You had a lot of momentum going in to halftime. And you, and you squandered it. You squandered it bad. Disappointing. The Jets beat the Texans. Um, I, I hope Jets fans are happy that they've won three games, which is very surprising. Like again, the NFL continues to amaze me. Like, like the Jets were like 0 and 14 at one point last year. Here they have. They've won more games than they have last year already. We're not even into week 13. We're not even into December yet, and here we are. Jets have three wins. Um, well, that flex for Sunday Night Football is looking a little bit more justified now because the Broncos dismantled the Chargers. Like, I was, I was sitting here perplexed at what was going on. Like, Justin Herbert didn't play well. Like, 
this Broncos defense, they, they, they stepped up. They stepped up big time. Like, how do you step up like this? You know? You know, how, how, how do you step up like that? My goodness. They really stepped up when it mattered. They really, really did. The Broncos did. You know, like... Chargers have had some really, really weird games these past couple weeks. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why they have. Like this is befuddling. This is some befuddling behavior right here. Cause I mean, I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get this at all, man. What's crazy is, is that the Broncos aren't even playing that well, and yet here they are, on offense at least. But here they are, on defense, getting it done getting it done that, that's just how they do it that's just how it's been for the Broncos they're getting it done they're over 500 they're still in this playoff race I know like a lot of people are writing them off but they're they're in it they're in it to win it and then the 49ers they're back in the playoff race too you know after running for over 200 yards against the Vikings like the, that last drive against the Vikings they, they just couldn't stop them it just could not stop him. Eli Mitchell was the guy in this game. The guy. Ran for over 100 yards. I know. I think he's a rookie, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I mean, things were just looking good. Good for the 49ers. Debo. Debo Samuel, you know, was out here showing out as well, you know, in the run game. And, I mean, what, what, what else can you say? Because... I mean the Vikings they, they had they had something. They they had some type of momentum. Remember, you know, this was the entire game at halftime. I was watching pretty much this entire game. And I'm just I'm just sitting here like what's what's going on with these Vikings in the second half? Like like things not go well with them in the second half. Mostly that third quarter because there wasn't any points scored in the fourth. There was a there was like a bizarre sequence of plays, you know, in that fourth quarter as well. I mean, I'm just I'm just sitting here like like the Vikings really should have you know a lot of wins right now, but here they are. They don't have those wins. They they're gonna need those. They're gonna need those, you know, soon. And, and they're just they're just not they're just not they're just not getting it done. Like I don't understand how they're not getting it done. Like they got, they got, they got to turn things around really quick. This, this is not the time to be, you know, losing games like this. It's not the time to be taking L's. I, I, I just don't get it. I just do not get the way the Vikings have been. There's just, there's just got to be something. Got to be something wrong here. Um. So. Um, Excuse me. How about the Packers or the Rams? Big time game. Lots of things are riding on this game. You know, playoff positioning. You know, I mean, everything that went wrong for the Rams went wrong for the Rams. I mean, hey, at least Odell got a touchdown. Isn't that right? Isn't that fun? Odell got a touchdown. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. This was... This was not the way the Rams wanted to this game to go. They did not want this to happen. You know. As soon as Matthew Stafford got picked off for a pick six, just it, it was just it was just beyond crazy. Beyond crazy. Like the like I, I don't know what's wrong with this Rams defense. They got they they have all the defensive pieces there. And they're getting burned in man to man coverage. They're, they're sitting there getting burned by Devontae Adams in man man coverage. Just like Aaron Rodgers has a bad toe. <laughs> you, got, you got to do something against that bad toe. You got to do something. You didn't do anything against it. Bad toe at all. Randall Cobb. Old corn on the cob. Randall Cobb. Got a touchdown on this team. Again, I'm just sitting here like, man, how? How? How, are they, how is this happening? How do you let this happen? How do you let Aaron Rodgers do this to you? 
he he doesn't he didn't even have you know ten working toes, and you, and you let and you let the Packers do that to you. You let them do that to you, just like it was nothing. Because I mean the route was on like. It, it, it was a close game at halftime, but then that third quarter hit, you know, things got from bad to worse for the Rams, and I, I'm just sitting here like, my goodness, how do, you, how do you mess this up? Like, the Rams really messed this up. It, it, they, they're, they're messing things up now. Like, they're, they're trailing the Cardinals. They're trailing the Cardinals by, like, two games now. It's either one or two games now that they're trailing the Cardinals. So they gotta write the ship because they've lost what three straight. They gotta write the ship too. You know things are not looking well, not looking well at all. And one of the ugliest games, you know, on Sunday night, I think I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know what this game was. Browns, Ravens, and, and the think we get to see this again in two weeks. Browns get to take a week off. We get to see this again in two weeks. Four fumbles, or rather four interceptions, not four fumbles, because there were two fumbles by the Browns, but four interceptions from Lamar Jackson, four of them, and the Browns still lost this game. We got, we got NFL kickers nonsense in this game, there was some NFL kickers nonsense throughout the day, as usual, you know, just dumb trick plays that didn't work. From the Browns, I mean, I mean, there, there's just a there, oh, crazy catch from Mark Andrews. One of the crazy catches that I don't think I've ever seen in my entire life, you know. And then Joku pass that was also crazy, which I don't know how, you know, he caught that, but apparently he did catch that. I, I just don't know. I just don't know, man. You know, and the Browns really had, they really needed this. They needed this win. And they just had all the opportunities and completely squandered it. They had all the opportunities there. Again, this is one of the ugliest Sunday Night Football games I think I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I, I've seen some ugly pillow fights, but this was one of the ugliest pillow fights I've ever seen in quite a while. Again, Lamar Jackson is unreal. You know, that, that, that first pass to Mark Andrew was crazy. But the second one in which he escaped like several Browns defenders... And made that pass to get the touchdown. Unreal. Unreal stuff, man. And then, the put the icing on the cake. I think the Seahawks are done. I, I really think so now. This, this loss confirms it. <laughs> you, like, Russell Wilson, man. It, it might be time to just say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go on injured reserve for the rest of the season. Because this was, this was not what you want to see from the Seahawks. Not what you want to see. If the Washington football team, which, you know, they can't really do too much. The football team can't do too much. Like, like this is some crazy stuff. Like, there was a safety involved in this game. Or maybe it was a two point. Or maybe it was a two point. Yeah, it was a safety. It was a safety. It was either a safety or a two-point conversion. I didn't watch this game, by the way. Uh, you know, 17-15, uh, I'm just sitting here. J.D. McKissick was the guy that scored a couple touchdowns in this game, so it was two TDs. Um, and the Seahawks are, you know, they're, they're pretty much out of it. Like, like now there's a log jam in the NFC over, the, over one final playoff spot. There's a whole log jam of 14 teams fighting for one spot and and the crazy thing is that the Seahawks are not one of those teams we know the Lions are but the Seahawks are not like again I've been saying it for weeks that the Seahawks season has been a disaster and it just got from bad to worse it got from bad to worse this loss probably puts the nail in the coffin and me wanting to really talk about the Seahawks again you know like they like they got the Seahawks in these late windows, you know, for the next few weeks and stuff like that. It's time to flex them out. It is time to flex them out. Time to get them on out of there. You know, because I mean, this is just embarrassing at this point. You know, this is just like this is not what you want to see. Not what you want to see from the Seahawks. But it's okay. 
it's okay. We always get new blood in the NFL playoffs, and that's just the way it is. So week 13 looking kind of interesting, you know. Going to be an intriguing slate of games here for week 13. I can't wait. I can't wait for that. You know, as we get into December. Excuse me. Um, and uh, the wild season continues. I think the AFC East first place will be on the line. AFC West first place will be on the line. You know, things are heating up. They're going to continue to heat on up. Let's be going down to it. I mean, again, I, I cannot wait. So December, it, it's make or break it time, guys. It is make it or break it time when it comes to the NFL. That's usually when teams start to form their identities fully. You know, they're like eighty. They're like seventy-five percent there now. Teams are getting to about that eighty-five percent point once we get to December. Cannot wait for it. So with that being said, everybody, I will see you all tomorrow talking about college football, talking about the FCS. We'll put those into a double video tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Take care. Have a good night. And yeah, the NFL, still king, baby. Still king. Because, you know, I just don't know what to make of it. I don't know what to make of the NFL anymore, man. <laughs>